and a stark contrast in the amateur records of these two fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, the next Gonzalez, as we mentioned, a two-time Pan Am champion, champion and Campadoni, no amateur fights at all. And when the fight starts, we'll tell you how Campadoni became judges, a professional boxer. And, Bob and Gonzalez says, I know Fidel is watching. So I am going to put forth a special effort here tonight. Originally from New York. And here are the ring introductions from Alan Tour. Texas, with a professional rec record of five wins, three losses. This young man weighs 206 and one quarter pounds. Let's welcome William Campadoni. Campadoni. And his opponent. Boxing out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with black trim. He tipped the Toledo's at an even 242 pounds from Havana, Cuba. This young man is the two-time Pan-American Golden Glove champion with an amateur record of 220 wins with only 20 losses and he is making his professional debut. Let's have a warm welcome for Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez, four round heavyweight. A tremendous disparity in both weight and reach between these two fighters. William Campadoni weighing in at 206 and a quarter. Gonzalez at 242 even. Gonzalez an 88 inch reach. Campadoni a 78 inch reach. And here we go with round one. And Campadoni comes right out after Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Campadoni is a brawler. As a matter of fact, as we mentioned, no amateur bouts. He was a bouncer in a nightclub in New York City. He was uh, spotted punching out a customer by New, uh, New York, a former New York uh, boxing commissioner, Jose Torres. Torres hooked him up with Custom Auto, who put him in Mike Tyson's training camp. And Campanoni spent two years sparring with Mike Tyson. He goes to one knee, and they're ruling it a slip. Eddie Eckert wipes off the gloves, but uh, Campadoni <laughs> Right into a pro career without amateur bouts. Stopped in one round in his last fight as he was outweighed by 70 pounds by Billy Wright. That was back on February the 15th. His handler, Ron Sacco, says they have come to Miami to start a career. Well, one guy starting a pro career, Jorge Luis Gonzalez, won 210 out of his 222 amateur bouts. KO'd 169 of those opponents. He won the 1983 and 1987 Pan Am Games Championships in the Super Heavyweight Division, representing his native Cuba. In the 1987 championships, Gonzalez uh, beat both Riddick Bowe and Lennox Lewis on consecutive nights to capture the title. Of course, Bowe and Lewis are both in the top 10 in the heavyweight division right now in the professional ranks. So, Quite an impressive feat there. And to get to the 1983 team, Gonzalez had to beat Teofilo Stevenson, the Cuban legend, three straight times to qualify for the team that uh, went to those Pan American games. So quite an impressive amateur career for Jorge Luis Gonzalez, 9-0 in international competition against uh, boxers from the United States. Campadoni is a rather unorthodox fighter, calls himself the gladiator favorite fighter you know when you ask a lot of these fighters who their favorite fighter was most of them say uh, Ali or Marvin Hagler or Sugar Ray Leonard or Tyson his favorite fighter of all time Jack Dempsey he likes the way Dempsey went in there and went right after his opponent you saw how Campadoni went right after Gonzalez at the opening bell handicapped a lot by uh, a lack of weight weight differential between him and his opponent also experience his pro debut back in June of 1987, he fought former national amateur champion Alex Garcia and was stopped in one round. Garcia was 3-0 as a pro at the time, but had a wealth of amateur experience. 
and Campadoni was certainly just not ready uh, for that fight against Alex Garcia. Garcia, by the way, mentioned as a potential opponent for George Foreman, but that's another story for another time. Final seconds of round number one here in Miami. Round two, and it's six feet three inches tall. William Campadoni is still giving up three inches to Jorge Luis Gonzalez, also giving up quite a bit of weight. Campadoni weighing in at 206 and a quarter. Gonzalez at 242 pounds. Both fighters have red trunks with the black trim, but Gonzalez is clearly the big man in there as he lands a right hand. Gonzalez's story of how he wound up in the United States is a very unique one. He was in Finland for an international competition on April the 3rd. From there, the Cuban team was going to move on to Russia for a bigger international competition. Gonzalez said he had been thinking of defecting from Cuba for years. One night, he just walked away from security, got out of the security's reach, went up to a policeman in Finland, asked for political assignment, asylum. He was taken away. Shortly thereafter, Luis de Cubas who also handles Jose Rivalta, Robert Little Joe Daniels, former cruiserweight champion, and had a hand in the comeback of Roberto Duran when Duran won the uh, middleweight title. The Cubas went to Finland and signed up uh, Jorge Luis Gonzalez, had plans to bring him to the U.S. Had a little dispute with a rival promoter who claimed to have a contract also with Gonzalez. That uh, dispute has been resolved in court. The Cubas is, has been giving, uh, given uh, he writes to Gonzalez, it was thrown out of court, the dispute just recently, as a matter of fact. And the Cubas, the special advisor for Gonzalez, has him in this bout tonight, pro debut against Campadona, who's covering up. Gonzalez throwing some wild shots, and not really connecting solidly with too many of them. But you can tell the tremendous difference in size between these two fighters that Campadoni is getting worn down just a little bit. It's the final minute of round number two in the heavyweight division, and we are scheduled for okay, four rounds. Okay. Let's go. The much ballyhooed pro debut of Jorge Luis Gonzalez, former two-time Pan American champion, Pan American Games champion, representing Cuba. Landing some, not really landing right hands there. That one got through the gloves a little bit. Gonzalez winds up, Campadoni backing toward the ropes. An unusual hairstyle for Campadoni, who says he is still a bouncer at a nightclub in El Paso, where he presently lives. Bob Sacco, the trainer and manager, called him an unpredictable type in the ring. So far, he hasn't been able to forecast any offense for Campadoni. Number three in the heavyweight division. Both Gonzalez and Campadoni wearing the red trunks with the black trim. Campadoni, though, is the guy who, whose hairdo looks a little bit like a chocolate layer cake, I guess you could say. And Gonzalez is a type that will clown around a little bit in the ring. He holds his hands low. He's got pretty quick hands. And they say pretty good foot speed for a big guy, and he certainly is big at 6'6 and 242. Campadoni throwing a wild left hook there. Has really never been threatened uh, since 
Vince Campanoni came out for the opening bell and swarmed all over him, but not effectively. That left to uppercut Father Campanoni a little bit. He looks to have an abrasion, and he's got some blood coming from somewhere. Looks like it could be the bridge of the nose. There is some blood on Campanoni's face that is bothering him. We're trying to get an angle on it. But now, Gonzalez is landing. And the referee, Eddie Eckert, is going to step in and stop the fight. There's the cut right there. Looks to be near the pitch of the nose of Campadoni. Getting pummeled toward the end. And it is one happy pro debut for Jorge Luis Gonzalez, who gets a little more than a workout here against Campadoni, who is not the most offensive of fighters. But nonetheless, a guy who came to fight and came to take some punishment. Gonzalez landed some uppercuts with authority in that uh, third round. And being a much bigger guy, they were certainly going to have uh, some sort of effect. As we mentioned, Gonzalez was 242 pounds. Campadoni, 206 and a quarter. Here you see the entourage of Jorge Luis Gonzalez, trainer Carlos Albrene. There's Luis de Cubas there in the foreground, congratulating his man on a job well done. And a lot of Gonzalez fans here in the audience, they've uh, heard about him, they've seen him on television before. Now they get to see him in the flesh as a professional boxer. And this certainly is somewhat of a historic occasion here. As Miami's uh, Cuban-American community, very rabid boxing fans, and they have come out in full force for this event. We're getting ready to go up to our ring announcer, Alan Tour, and we'll get the official time of the uh, TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, the time Two minutes and seven seconds of the third round by technical knockout. Your winner in his pro debut, Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez. How about a nice hand for William Campagoni, ladies and gentlemen? 